what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlook here so you're asking me to talk about top gun maverick in this video here today so this will be my spoiler free review for top gun maverick i saw the movie this past monday night i'm going to be doing my review on it today though and uploading it uh since i know there was like a early screening for fans last night but uh this movie is directed by joseph kosinski we know it's a long overdue sequel to the original movie from the 80s top gun with tom cruise in the role back in the lead role here as well and of course it's gonna have tom cruise in the cast it has miles teller jennifer conley john ham glenn powell lewis pullman charles charles parnell monica monica barbero jay ellis and danny ramirez now top gun maverick follows pete mitchell who is very dedicated i'll say at this point and he's not liked by a few of his peers he's had more than 30 years of service but remains captain to avoid rank advancements that would keep him grounded uh keep him out of the the jets that we know he loves to fly and he's asked to return to top gun to train a select group in order to complete a mission later on in the movie now i do have to just say that this movie does indeed surpass the original simply because it captures the qualities of that first film while tripling them you have a catchy soundtrack you have crews who is still delightful to see on screen you have these likable new characters you have stunning visuals and some of the most intense flight sequences that you'll actually forget you're watching the movie at times i'll say the film does a great job at bringing in the cheesiness aspect of that original but tones it down in order to tell a more matured story kosinski's direction here i really feel makes the movie that much better because this narrative isn't doing anything special and the characters are very one note outside of rooster who shares a connection with pete and his past now the one note characters many of you who grew up with the original i'm sure you can pinpoint the fact that most of the characters in the original top gun outside of a select few they're not being written that well you have the same thing here they're all very likable and they all have their little traits about them that make them uh likable and you'll want to root for them but for the most part there's nothing really that interesting going on with them outside of one or two characters maybe a third in this little group of people that are being trained by pete so in that regard that was one of the weaker elements for me now there's tension between pete and rooster all throughout this movie that just keeps it engaging and the way maverick pete uh this movie i would say because it's called top gun maverick the way this movie uses that uses a specific sentimental moment from that last movie to constantly hang over the narrative here in this one all these years later just as an extra emotional punch to everything that you witness it highlights how that really did have a strong enough impact on pete to the point that it's still something he hasn't really forgiven himself for all these years later and definitely i would say reliant on it's definitely reliant on the nostalgia in the sense that it's not being drowned in it to the point that it seems that there's more interest in admitting that the original movie was better what it's always doing is paying respects to the original but then saying we're going to outdo you and we just did that's how i felt coming out of top gun maverick we respect what tony scott has done there's a lot of respect tone to show me given to tony scott and what he did with that original movie but what is accomplished here it's just leaps and bounds better putting it ahead of that original movie so Maverick again is better on every level, higher risk with even greater rewards. The aerial shots are going to have you on the edge of your seat. And I didn't mention this earlier in my review, but the sound design should be experienced in the in, in an IMAX theater or the biggest screen possible. The movie's strongest assets genuinely just come down to its direction, cinematography, and a third act that I'm sure will be probably the most exhilarating experience you will have all year. Maverick's progressions here how he's written are definitely more compelling to me so the writing while it has its awful moments with the dialogue still handles the lead character very well despite leaving the other characters to, to rot I'll just say and I definitely would admit there's also a lot more humor here than in the original but what it does is it balances it so well so I'll give an example one moment there's a pretty intense flight sequence going on it'll have you on the edge it'll have you concerned for the fate of certain characters but then it's broken by this humor that doesn't feel out of place it, it it harkens back to other moments of dialogue and conversations the characters had earlier on in the movie and it's not something that is prolonged it's very small and short and simple and then it's right back into the action it's not anything that feels out of place for the most part because of how again it is placed into the narrative 
it's not something that is diminishing the intensity of what's going on it's just one of those more light-hearted moments so that you as the audience while your heart is going to be racing during a lot of these sequences you can have a like a moment to just take us take a sigh of relief take a breath um, and again, I do have to say it's got terrific pacing. Each moment breathes on its own, has a purpose, and then the film just keeps pushing forward. These action sequences definitely tap into all five of your senses, and I mean that in the most exaggerated way possible. There's a lot of great tension building, and just having your audience feel the nervousness of every character in these flight sequences definitely made this a more exhilarating experience and i definitely would say if you are someone who's able to go out and see it this we can see with the biggest audience possible if you're someone who can who can do that because it is something that i think should be experienced with an audience just so that you can completely immerse yourself in it the way this movie is still no matter how good i can say it is still all these years it's too late to be so late and then also at the same time surpass your original that's a feat that i think you need to be regarded you need to be recognized for this is again i will have to say one of those sequels that is going to be regarded as a once in a lifetime sequel i feel like to be able to come back after the original came out so many years ago and it's so beloved and it has so many people that will defend it but then to also come back outdo the original stand enough on your own to the point that if you are someone who hasn't watched that original you don't need to worry about that they catch you up to speed on everything just fine you're not going to feel out of the loop you might feel that there's an emotional there's an emotional edge that you might get if you experience the first one first but still even without that the more emotional moments the ones that might have some of you crying they are not going to be i would say they're not going to be as impactful for you in the sense that, again, the movie does a great job just establishing all these sweet little connections and emotional arcs that have these great payoffs in the end. And the soundtrack, I have to, again, say is phenomenal. The one song by Lady Gaga, definitely I've seen people talk about it. I think it's going to be Oscar worthy. Top Gun Maverick definitely was something that surprised me in the sense that it wasn't on my radar. I just knew it was happening. I did grow up with the original. And I think me not knowing too much about this movie going into it is also one thing that made it that much better i would give this honestly a eight and a half out of ten but let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and never miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course limiting the movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video